Hello everyone, my name is Paulo Alves and on this video I'm going to start the state management of the login page for our real delivery app using React Native together with React Redux. And we will also create a service that soon will connect with the Firestore database and our back-end REST API. Subscribe to the channel in case you want to follow this development and let's take a look on what we are going to have built by the end of the video. If I enter an email that doesn't exist and click on the forgot email password button, we get an error message. If I enter a valid email, then the user sees a message showing that the recovery email was sent. If I try to log in with that error email and some password, then an error message is shown. If I put a valid email, then the user is redirected to the login screen. So let's go to the code. As our goal is to create the state management for the login page, we can go to the app store folder and create a new folder for the login state, which will be called login. Inside of this folder, we will create a new file loginstate.ts that will represent the state of the login page. Here we can export an interface called login state. Let's take a look on the login page and find out what states we need to manage. We need to know if the user is recovering the email or password, and we also need to know if the user managed to recover the email or password. So let's create two properties on the login state. One will be the property is recovering password, which is a boolean, and the other one will be the property is recovered password, which is also a boolean. Also, we need to know if the user is trying to log in and if the user managed to log in. So let's create two more properties, is logging in, which is a boolean, and is logged in, which is also a boolean. We also need to know if there was an error on any of those moments, so let's create an error property to manage that possibility. And that's all we need for now to manage the state of our login page. Now let's go to the next step and create the login page actions. Just to remind you, actions are instructions we are going to send to the store to let the store know how it should update itself. To do this, I will create a new file called login.actions.ts. This file will have all the actions of the login state. Let's start with the actions that are involved in the email password recovery. We will export a constant called recoverPassword that will receive the createAction function of the Redux.js toolkit. We will identify this action by the string recover password, and this action will receive no parameters. That's our first action, so let's think about the flow of the login page. The user will click on the forgot email password button and will dispatch this action to the store. Based on this action, the login page will know the user is trying to recover its email password and will call a service to recover it. If that service is successful, then we'll have to update the state of the login page informing the login page that the user managed to recover its password. So the service will have to call a new action to update the store. Let's create this new action. To do this, I will export a constant called recover password success that will receive the create action function of the Redux.js toolkit. We will identify this action by the string recover password success and this action doesn't need to receive any properties as we are only interested in the success of the request, not on its response. Alright, now we need to do something similar in case there was an error on the recovery of the email password. When there is an error, the service will have to call an action to update the store with that error. So let's create this new action. I'll export a constant called recover password fail that will receive the create action function of the Redux.js toolkit. We will identify this action by the string recover password fail and this action receives as property the error. So what's happening is that right here I'm saying that this action will receive the error as a parameter. It actually shouldn't be a string, should be any and then it will send this object to the reducer that we will create soon. So the object will have the property payload as the error parameter we just passed here in the action. And all right, now only the actions related to the login are missing. But let's first take care of the forgot email password part of the login page and then we come back to the login itself. The next step is to create the reducers for the login page. The reducers are responsible for receiving the action dispatched, identifying them, and returning to the stored and new state. 
let's create a new file called login.reducers.ts. Inside of it, we'll create a constant called initial state, which is of the type login state and will be initialized with all its properties equal to no or false. Now we'll create a constant called login reducer that will receive the create reducer function of the Redux.js toolkit. Our reducer will receive the initial state we'll just define and it will also have a builder that will add cases to this reducer. So on this builder we can add a case for the recover password action. And this builder will execute a function that will return the new state to the store. For now let's just return the initial state. Let's do something similar to the success and fail actions, so I'll just copy and paste and change the action names. And now let's add this login reducer to our store so the store know it exists. We can go to the store.ts file and add a new entry to the reducers constant. Alright, now our store has the login state. Let's now create some tests to manage the changes we'll make on top of those actions in the future. I will create a new folder called double underline tests, double underline, and inside of this folder I will create a file called login.store.tests.js. In this file I will describe the login store tests, and let us start by creating a test for the recover password action. I will start with a failing test, so I will expect that true is false. So I'll save this and now let's run our tests. To do this, I come to the command line and I tell npm to run the tests. I can also inform npm to keep watching the changes I make on the files and then rerun the tests on every change. So let's do this. All right, now we have a failing test and can actually start programming. What I need to do here is, based on the initial state, when I send the recover password action to the reducer, the reducer will answer with a new state that has the is recovering password property equal to true. So I'll declare a constant called initial state that will be initialized with the initial state of the logging state. So let me go to the reducers and then copy that initial state we have there. Now I can create a constant called new state which will receive the response of the login reducer that receives as parameters the initial state I just created and the recover password action. Then I'll expect that the new state is equal to the initial state plus the error as null, the is recovered password as false, and the is recovering password as true. When I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything inside of the reducer, so let's make it pass. To do this, I go to the login reducer and on the recover password action, I return the new state which will be the current state plus the error as null plus the is recovered password as false plus the is recovering password as true. So as you can see, we have an error on the current state, but to get access to it, we just need to put it here current state because this is a function and this function is receiving as parameter the current state. After I save this, our test will pass. Let's create a new test for the success case. I will just copy and paste the previous test, change its name to recover password success, change the initial state property as recovering password to true, and change the action to recover password success. Now I have to expect that the new state is equal to the as recovering password as false and the as recovered password as true. After I save this, our test will fail. It fails because I'm not doing anything on the reducer for the recover password success action, so let's make it pass. I'll first get access to the current state, and now I will return as the new state the current state, error as null, the as recovered password as true, and the as recovering password as false. After I save this, our test will pass. So let's create a new test for the fail case. I'll just copy and paste the previous test, change its name to recover password fail, the initial state keeps being the same, change the action to recover password fail, now I need an error parameter so I'll just create a new constant called error which will just be an object with some error property. And now I have to expect that the new state will be the initial state plus the error 
the yes recovering password property as false and the yes recovered password property as false. After I save it, our test will fail. It fails because the reducer is just returning the current state. So let's return a new state that's based on the initial state plus the is recovered password as false and the is recovering password as false. And now just the error is missing here. Notice on the test file that together with the action I'm sending the error as parameter. To get access to that parameter we can add to the reducer function another parameter called action. This action, as you can see when I hover the mouse, is an object that has the error that is the parameter of the action. So we can set as the error the payload of that action. After I save this, our test will pass. Alright, our state, actions and reducers for the first part of the login page are created. Let's just make them a bit better now. Imagine that in the future I need to add another property to the login state, like the user, for example. Notice that now our code is broken and I need to make changes on some parts of it to make it work again. And that's pretty bad. One way we can make it better is to create a new file called appstate.ts. On this file, I'll export an interface called appstate, which has the property loading of the loading state type and the property logging of the login state type. This app state represents the state of our whole store. So as for now, we only have the loading state and the logging state. That's actually what we need in our app state. And now let's create another file called app initial state .ts. This file will contain the initial state of our store. So I'll export a constant called app initial state, which is of the type app state. And now I can define the whole store initial state here. So the loading state will have the show property as false and the logging state will have the error as null and all the other properties as false. Now I can just come to the places in the code where I define the initial logging state and instead of defining the initial state again, I can just get it from the file we just created. Notice that here on the first test, I just needed the pure initial state of the logging page. But for the success action, I actually needed the initial logging state plus the is recovering password as true. Same case for the fail case. So that's why I did this. Our test will still pass. And now if I come to the login state and add a new property, we will only have to change the code in one place, which is the app initial state. So, all right, let's remove these properties as we actually don't need them and focus on the app. Now, let me close all those files and let's implement the state management for the email password recovery for the login screen. What we are going to do here is actually make this work. I'll click on the forgot email password button and the loading component will show up. If the service is called successfully, I will hide the loading component and show a success message here below. If there was a fail, I will hide the loading component also and show an error message here below. So let's work on this.